When it comes down to performance cars, there's one thing that I love and it's turbocharged cars. But there's also a second thing I love, supercharged cars. I love go fast cars, okay? Wheels, tire suspension are always awesome, but if you got a little extra scoot scoot between the knees, that's always a positive. But there is a common argument between whether you should go scoot scoot with a turbocharger or a supercharger. I'm Alex, Alex at Defy on Instagram. In today's episode of Opposite Lanes, we're gonna be comparing a B5 S4 to Mercedes-Benz E55 AMG. Let's go. Okay, so what? The turbos, the turbos are big, so boost doesn't kick in until like a really high RPM. Okay. So if you're gonna get into boost, you gotta get into second, get it to like 3K and then get on it, and then it'll hit it like 5,500. So there's like a process? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's fine. B5, just B5, B5. It's always B5, it's always the turbo crowd that's always like this. So this is Mariah's Audi S4, B5 platform. She needed to tell me that it's one of 254 in a Mola yellow, which I think is just, it helps people with yellow cars sleep at night when they tell you how rare the color actually is. So we're just gonna, I'm not four foot eight, so we need to move that back a minute. And of course, now that I have the directions on how to drive the car, let's talk about the obvious. We're gonna talk a little bit about the car, then we're obviously gonna talk about turbocharged versus supercharged. But just so everybody knows, a little quirk, the old B5, C5, any mid, you know, 1998, 2004, you have yourself half of your pixels working in your center dash. That is a very common issue. So this has uh, sparkle wheels, it's got some Pirelli tires, BC coils, and uh, big old turb skis, as Mariah says, which require a certain cheat code to unlock. Oh, do not enter, we're going the wrong way. So in case anybody's unfamiliar with the differences between supercharged versus turbocharged, turbocharged, generally speaking, work on exhaust gases, whereas a supercharger works on a pulley system from the crankshaft of your engine. So generally speaking, turbochargers are gonna be more fuel efficient in general. Um, and because they don't have a direct relation to the engine themselves, it's the exhaust fume, it's disconnected. The second thing that makes these cars really fun is the fact that you have this little thing called turbo leg. Now, turbo leg is not something that you want, but it is a little fun. It kind of, kind of you get to play around with it a little bit. And the reason that people really like turbochargers is obviously because of the amount of pressure that you can build, the amount of power you can get from, there's a cop that way, we're going this way, the amount of power you can get from turbochargers, and of course just the tuning capability of them. And turbochargers in general are cheaper than superchargers, generally speaking. I always have to use generalities especially with performance parts because there's so many different companies out there now that sell really, really, really cheap parts and then there's also the companies that sell really, really expensive parts. But in general, turbochargers versus superchargers, you're almost getting two different types of communities. Turbochargers, heavily tuning oriented, heavily oriented more towards the tuner crowd themselves. A lot of import your vehicles are gonna have more turbochargers. Superchargers jumped into the Audi game later in the later in the generations, but the B5 S4 platform has two turbochargers on the 2.7 liter six speed. And I love this motor. It smells a little bit like oil, but that's okay. Cause it's a B5 S4. It's what they're supposed to smell like. Now, Mariah's has the infamous, the infamous, it is infamous is not the right word. Mariah has like the, the statement of turbo, like, there's so many people that say this when they own a turbocharged car. And I've said it myself, so I am not digging on her. 
I am making fun of all of us. She has told me that this is a stage three B5 S4, which is true. It's got big old turbos and intercoolers and all that other stuff. But it, and I quote, I'm not lying just needs to be tuned. I have heard that literally everywhere when it comes to these cars. And it does pull very nicely, but it always does make me giggle a little bit when we get jump into a turbocharged car and the first thing that's said is it just needs to be tuned. Why do these cars always just need to be tuned? It's like we got all the way to the end and we're like, nah, we don't, we don't need to tune it, do we? We just put slap the big old turb skis on it and call it good. Why would you pick a turbocharged car over a supercharged car? Well, I think first and foremost, most people go to a turbocharged car because they're usually more accessible to people that are looking at the modification community. Turbochargers are just more common. Pair that with the fact that you can do a little bit more with a turbocharged platform over a supercharged platform. And then you got reason number two, you can play around with them a little bit more. They're a little bit more fun. They're on smaller engines. People have a tendency to modify them easier. You can bolt them on, change them around, things like that. That's another really big reason. And the final reason that people would choose turbocharger over a supercharger is, well, just because turbochargers are, well, they're almost a bit more fun. Everything about them is a bit more raw. You feel it when you do a pull. You feel it when you're driving the car, when you feel that boost building, when you hear the, the, the turbochargers winding up or the blow off valves going off. Like that's a really visceral experience. And a lot of people really enjoy that. I know I absolutely love that. It makes the inner 12 year old in me very, very excited. But there's a couple cons to turbocharged cars versus supercharged cars. I think the number one thing, especially with turbocharged cars versus supercharged, is turbocharged cars have the lag. I said turbocharged like 24 times, and I'm sorry, okay? But they do have that boost lag. You have more of a gradual uh, buildup of power with a supercharger because you don't have that. It's connected directly to the. It's connected directly to the motor. Now. Even though turb skis are more efficient, nobody really cares besides manufacturers if they're more efficient. And finally, turbochargers have just a little bit more of a tendency to have issues with them. Mostly because we play around with all of the contraptions and pieces of a turbocharged system in a car. Whereas a supercharger, a lot of times in the most general way, you just slap that bad boy on the top, send it on its way. People say that turbos are easier to install. Maybe they're harder to keep alive. Specifically with the S4, I think what I love about this car, if anybody is on the fence about a B5 S4, these platforms are so much fun. So much fun. The wheel, like the, the, the size, the wheelbase, everything about these cars is a blast. The 2.7 liter motor, twin turbo, blast. Everything about these cars, fantastic. If you're looking to buy one, they are fun. The Imola Yellow may not be everyone's taste, but they are a very fun car. I think the toughest part is finding one that hasn't been beat up, and then finding one, if it is stage three, actually properly tuned. These cars do have their own little finicky issues. They also are prone to braking. I think I've seen this car on jack stands more than I've seen it running, but that's not a bad thing because we enjoy that. As long as you're good with the center dash that always has half the pixels running. And here we have another Subaru Crosstrek. That's another Subaru Crosstrek. We are changing the video. Look, one, two, get the fuck out of here, Janet. Three Crosstreks. So, all right, anyway, now that we've talked about the turbocharged, B5 S4 and a Mola Yellow, one of 254 according to Mariah, that only needs a tune to be perfect. It is on sparkle wheels, we're probably gonna wanna change that around a little bit just cause it's a little bit, we'll call it period correct. Maybe a little bit newer wheels and stuff like that, you'd be set. But now we're gonna jump into probably, probably my second favorite car in the history of the world. It's gonna be really hard to not be biased. We're gonna go jump in a supercharged AMG.
okay, okay. I'm excited. We are getting in Sean's. Oh gosh, all my stuff's gonna fall out. 2003 Mercedes-Benz E55 AMG. I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna try not talking about the car as much as the supercharger. However, if you guys think talking about the car is more fun, just let me know because I feel like I could talk about this car all day. Here's a couple things to know about the E55 AMG really quick. You got some nice sun covers in the back. You have, you hear that? Air conditioned seats, heated seats. You have enough dash dials and widgets up here to tell you when you need to go have lunch. And stock, 470 horsepower and just about the same amount in torque. You throw a little supercharger uh, pulley on this thing, a couple little extra bits and pieces intake and exhaust, you got yourself a 600 horsepower four door sedan that is comfortable, that has everything you could possibly want in a car. But you also have everything that could possibly go wrong in a car, in a single car. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Where are the buttons? So this, AMGs are automatic, just enough, just FYI. And then we're on Warsteiner VFFs, Nitto tires, and stock suspension. Now, the E55 AMGs have an aromatic suspension, which is iconically known for going out. If that is not enough for you, the E55 AMG is also iconically known for having electrical issues up until the 2004 model, which still has electrical issues. So, the disclaimer on this car before I jumped into this one, because Mariah's was that it just needed a tune, was that this one, sometimes the heat exchanger will just turn off after the first pull because it thinks it's broken or something. I'm not entirely sure. The number one thing that I love about supercharged cars is that you can literally just do this and you just, it's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. Now, even though it's an automatic, which sometimes gets people all riled up for some reason, automatic cars actually aren't terrible. And in an AMG, you, you really don't need it because it's just so much fun to put your foot down on the ground and just let the car do its thing as you scream to like 100 miles an hour. Supercharged cars are pretty awesome. One of the best things about a supercharged car, one of the reasons I love supercharged cars the most is because of the sound. Now, a lot of people talk about just blow off valves being the best sound in the world, but there is something so atrociously addicting to the sound of a supercharger whine. Not only that, but the amount of power that you get from a supercharger is pretty nuts without any of the lag. You get the power band way at the low end, which when you're actually looking at when you're driving your car, how do you compare the two? Which one is better? In my opinion, when you're driving your car just around like normal city roads and stuff like that, you're never really getting into a point where you'd be able to use a lot of your turbo power because it's all mid to high end. Most of it is in that 45 to 5500 RPM range before you really start kicking in a nickel with full boost. With a supercharged car, you never really have to worry about that because it's the power is there the whole time. It's essentially a complete replacement for additional power all across the board. Now, superchargers aren't as common. We talked about turbochargers being way more common, kind of like riding your bike in the middle of a street is really not that common anymore, but people still do it for some reason. Manson spandex makes me uncomfortable. But that's not to say that turbochargers have gone away by any means, they're a ton of fun. And the tuning, although it's a little bit different, throw a smaller pulley on this bad boy and you are cooking, brother, cooking. And let me remind you that with this specific car, you're doing zero to 60 in, in a few seconds with air condition and heated seats on and more buttons that control these seats than you could possibly imagine. I am going to turn around up here because I know that these wheels will rub. Now we don't have to talk about the shortcomings of the E55 AMG. The fact that it sometimes drinks coolant, the sometimes that the battery just randomly dies, or talk about the fact that the electrical issues slowly start to take over the car, or the fact that the aromatic system isn't supported anymore, so if it breaks, you pretty much just have to get a whole new suspension component. We're not gonna talk about any of that, because that's bad news. The good news is that when you're driving an AMG, specifically the E55 that is a 5.4 liter supercharged V8, 
it's so much fun. And the power's there all the time. It's attached to the engine, sure. It's, it's less e efficient, sure. You get worse gas mileage, sure. But you're replacing that with power and smiles, and why would you not do that? I'm not really going into the whole modification world looking for fuel efficiency. I, I'm looking to have a good time. And the E55 does that really well. A couple cons to superchargers, obviously, is that it is attached to the motor. It's a direct bolt-on. They're sometimes a little bit more difficult to work with or work on, especially if you're taking something from naturally aspirated to supercharged. The old stuff is super simple because you're essentially just slapping it right on the top, but sometimes it gets a little bit more difficult with your pro charger setups or things like that. In all, when you're talking about whether you want to get a supercharger or turbocharger, I think people always get mad when I say it's personal preference, so I'm not going to say that. Which one is better? I would say for city driving, if you're looking to just have fun and do some few pulls here or there, and you're doing short road trips and things like that, a supercharger will always, I think, beat a turbocharger. Now, a turbocharger starts to take the cake when you're doing highway pulls, when you're roll racing, when, you're, when you have a chance to fully use the turbos. But not a lot of people end up actually getting the ability to fully use their turbo setup. I mean, even if you have a 400 horsepower S4 fully tuned, when are you gonna be able to cap out in that power? When are you able to actually use it for more than maybe a drag strip day or occasionally running around on the highway? When you're looking at a car that has a supercharger setup, you're getting the power at the low end, you're sacrificing a little bit of gas mileage, but in my eyes, it's worth it. And an E55? 100%, 100%. I mean, sure, the check engine light is on, the tire pressure monitor sensor needs to be reactivated because the wheels don't work with that, and sure, the air suspension's gonna go out eventually, and the heat exchanger probably turned off because we did two pulls, but if you take all of that away, the E55 is a fun car, and it's about the same price as an S4 right now. Sean picked this one up for seven grand. That S4 was like the same price. Look at all that you get in this car. You just get all the other issues with it too. It's kind of like being in a rough relationship. I mean, it's worth it because they might be really pretty, but you just kind of have to keep the fact that there's a toxic relationship maybe behind closed doors a little bit. It's personal preference though. You choose what you like. I just really, really enjoy <clears throat> big rear wheel drive luxury cars. Cause boy, are they fun. Supercharged versus turbocharged, it's a really interesting conversation, especially when you're looking at an S4 or an E55 AMG. Superchargers are gonna like always win in my eyes because I feel like you can use them more often for everyday driving, but there's nothing more thrilling than hitting full boost in a turbocharged S4, even if it just needs a tune. Whether it comes down to having a turbocharged or supercharged car though, especially right now these days, it's important to just have something that's reliable. Neither of these cars, in all honesty, are reliable. I'm Alex. Let us know what you want us to cover next in the next episode of Opposite Lanes or what you'd like us to see compared to in the comments down there. And if you're looking for aftermarket wheels, tires, or suspension, be sure to hit us up over at fitmanindustries.com. And if you're mad that I said both of these cars are unreliable, I can say that because I own them and I know. Damn it. They are really unreliable, but they are a ton of fun. So it's like, does it really matter if they're unreliable, if they are a lot of fun? I guess it does depend though, because the E55 got better in 2004, depending on the electrical issues and the B5.